Hey kids, you're about to listen to a comedy podcast. That means that all of this is medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast. Where we discuss fitness and health and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives but without it being so boring. I'm your host, Dr. London Smith, Dr.com. I'd like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We've received some feedback about the excessive amount of technical medical terms I've been using, such as cystic and eternal sunshine of the spotless mind your manners. So I'll try to temper our terminology to a simpler one in the future. Here to help with that is our producer, Cameron. Oh, Dr. London, I've got some big, big news for today. We are relaunching Jock Doc University. A few weeks ago, we made our demands to our local schools, our public schools, uh, our local community colleges, all those things. And the mayor said, these ideas are so good. Why don't you get Jock Doc University going again? So, Because, what? well, just the reason why we, it's not going anymore at the moment, why we stopped. Jock-talk right, because well, we lost it. We don't know where it is. And like, and I'm almost positive I know where I left it. That's like, the I, thing is like, I'm, I'm so pretty close. sure I know where I left it as well. Yeah. And yet when I go to that same spot, here's kind of what I'm thinking, because a lot of a lot of the teachers and students at the time were saying like, hey guys, if we all just take like a few bricks a piece of this school, we can move it somewhere further away where Cameron and London can kind of leave us alone. Yeah. Um, and I was like, that's a really funny, that sounds like a really funny prank. But it I was think funny. Maybe, right. I think it's these senior pranks. I think they've just taken it too far sometimes. Well, I mean, it was really funny. I mean, I'm laughing about it still. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm almost laughing about it. All that to say, though, Dr. London, the literal first thing we have to figure out is what is our like specialties? You know, some schools are more renowned for their, uh, you know, the medical school uh, or their law school or, um, you know, for arts or, for, you know, every school has their niche. But before we can figure out how to get students here, we got to figure out where are we planting our flag? Yeah. And I like I've been drawing up some schematics on this. I think I have some ideas. Okay. 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 Let's let's hear so, and. So some schools, it's not just like the majors it, or the career paths. It's the party schools, right? So Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's also a big yeah. part of it is sports mm-hmm. and, and social things as yeah. well. Yeah. So our students will be known for being very elderly and coming back for re-education, okay? But in a cool street cred way. So, like, so they'll have dentures with grills on them. That's the big thing we're going to push. Okay. No, I, I I get that. So you're saying it it would the appeal would just be for old people. For old people's teeth, I guess the or their mouth area the most, yeah. Yeah. But not not dental school because you're not teaching them how to handle other people's teeth. No, I don't see why No, it'd be like kind of like advertising party school. It'd be oh, your teeth can look really cool at this school. If you have dentures. Oh, you're, this is still a party school angle. Okay, okay yeah, yeah. now I understand. So you, then you need to ha- maybe have some classes that appeal directly to elderly bad boys, like the true badasses of the octogenarians. How about slicking your hair back? Yeah, okay. So that would be a three-semester course. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just... I don't, I don't know that our students are going to have the like the strength in their wrists to actually pull it off um yeah or the the hair but it would you know it would require this you know we can involve wigs we can involve maybe like attachments where they could you know maybe from a lower angle maybe like a grabber claw that allows them to slick their hair back right right and that's you know and this does give us an opportunity to work with there are beauty schools in the area there are makeup schools in the area cosmetology and oh, and so you can like prank them and stuff. Yeah, I so, sort of like create like rivalries and okay, that's pretty cool, pretty cool. So okay, I think okay, I, uh, so angling in on the elderly party school, I want to also angle. This is separate because we've got to have different demographics right, that we're right. to. So so we're gonna we have that cornered. I also like the party school angle, but I would like to corner the market on the surprise party schools yes okay thank you because that's what everyone thinks about like oh party schools are oh just getting wasted and going to frats and hanging out with morgan wallen and just like all this stuff 
But like, what about surprise parties? That has a different vibe. Oh, totally. The different. surprise yeah. is almost as important as the party itself. Yes. Now, this might come in conflict with the elderly bad boy uh, demographic that we are pulling in. Just because if we are surprising people and yelling at them so frequently and t- really teaching people how to do that, having classes on like the most effective um, diversions, creative surprise, themed surprise parties you can come up with, whatever. And backstories to invent for, the, for it and alibis, yeah. more or less. But maybe we can put these yeah. two departments on opposite sides of the campus. Yeah. No, I'm trying to think of... Uh, yeah, okay, how how you'd have to plan the city around it, essentially. But we can work, you know, we could, that's the dean's problem, right? He has to figure out how to, like, keep all oh, the, the, dean. the cultures within the school. Oh, uh, that crusty old dean. Uh, which, by the way, that that's is... That's a subject for a different yeah. day, is we're going to, we have to pick who the, ooh, I hate that, the, the hated dean is, who we're going to hire for that. We'll figure that out in the weeks to come. And later, Cameron tells me, and I just want to confirm this now, that we do have a guest coming. That's We do, Dr. They're on the way. Okay, yes. Um, so do look forward to that. But before we move on, I would like to address a bit of listener feedback. So for a long time, our listener demographic was primarily composed of elderly gentlemen who retain their baby teeth. Uh, in our efforts to cater to these baby-toothed elderly folks, we found that we were neglecting the many bot accounts that download our podcast. So... Let's see. This week's feedback comes from TikTok. Okay. Uh, This is a comment on our response to Am I Geekin'? This was from at Andrew W. Wallen. They said, quote, Grimace Shake, end quote. So thank you so much for this feedback. So, So the Harlem Shake was a popular dance at one point. Okay. And I get this. I thought it was a bit of disturbing. Uh, that everyone thought like, oh, we have to right. pause whatever other thing we were doing. This was the trend. Like you stop the other thing to do the Harlem shake and people would th- sometimes get a little violent with it. Um, so I I do like this idea of a grimace. I, I, I really, really have to stop you, Dr. London. You're really okay. trying to sort of remove yourself from your involvement in the Harlem shake. You're saying, because p- other people would do it in such scary ways. You're trying to downplay. Could you just really quick explain what happened when you tried to do the Harlem Shake and sort of the well, I, consequences I, I, of that decision? I didn't just try to do it. Oh, I succeeded in the Harlem Shake, I think. Like, in part because it's a poorly defined. And I, I know this is just sounding like the transcript from the court. But, like, I really did check... Harlem Shake is kind of whatever you want it to be as long as the music's playing Mm -hmm. and you do something kind of to the beat. Okay. But yeah, so during uh, this kind of larger funeral service. uh, Yes, we understand that there's like a beat and that you dance to it. Most of the Harlem Shakes that other people did did not result in, you know, Paul Walker's kind of... Yeah. You know. No, so, so we were at the funeral and uh i paid i, I slipped the dj because it's a it's a good funeral so there's a dj uh i slipped the dj six hundred dollars to do the harlem shake he said well this is a lot of so he handed me back like 590 dollars yeah uh, sure and then he was like but yeah sure i'll play your stupid song um and then i waited and i was i was all tense and i was looking to the left and to the right and everyone was like not didn't didn't really know what i was doing song came on i ran up to the stage Yeah, nothing was playing before this you were yeah, you were just right. trying to dance to nothing yeah of course yeah well because you gotta get pumped up for this stuff yeah at the funeral you're playing the the song from your phone that's right yeah well it's because yeah because the dj did ultimately Decline. There's no DJ at a funeral. I, 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 I really want to stress this. There is no situation where there is a DJ at a funeral. There is maybe a man who puts on, like, my heart will go on during a slideshow. That is not the DJ. That is usually maybe, like, a cousin of the deceased. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I guess call him what you want. I don't know what you're trying to get out of me here. But, yes, I did pay someone $10. Well, I tried to pay someone a whole lot of money. They gave. They accepted just $10, and then... Nothing else. And then I, yes, ran up with my phone playing the Harlem Shake and started doing a dance. And uh, I, I, 
you when drop I was salsa, out. you drop salsa into Paul Walker's casket. Yeah, which because you had a taco bowl in one of your hands this entire time. Yeah, plus the vomiting, what I had already eaten. Yeah, because the dance made me super sick. Well, yeah, <laughs> you had eaten so many of those taco bowls. Yeah. Oh, I. But all I this was to say, well. clearly, this person when they're calling, they're calling you Mister Grimace Shake. Because they probably know your the lore around your an infamous Harlem Shake situation, and they're saying you know you also resemble sort of like a a giant purple hamburger monster. Yeah, which I take as a compliment. Um, so yeah, so th- like a like a less handsome grimace from McDonald's for sure. Hey hey sh- sure like I'm not I get that I'm not like. As famous as Grimmett, I'm not going to be winning everything with no, eye candy. Will I get it. Never be. Not, yeah. Never, ever, ever be as famous as him. Yeah. So, so thank you so much for that feedback. I hope we answered your question. Um, let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. This is a really exciting comment. Okay. This is a comment on our response to Do you have a deadly disease or do you just look like that? They said, this is from at Steven210101. They said, quote, Quality is amazing. Keep it up. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. And yes, oh my yes, gosh. yes. <laughs> this, this is honestly, Doctor London and I were discussing just before this episode. Like, all right, this is the last one, right? Yeah. Wow. Like, this is it. We did it. But, but yeah. Oh my gosh! If people wow. really, I mean, we knew the quality was um, improving, and we knew, especially yeah. when we got nominated for that. I mean, it was like an award or a wanted sign or what our, our faces were put on something. We were like, yeah. okay, like we're getting feedback. We're getting some like positive yeah. feedback. And then just to hear someone say, hey, man, I don't remember exactly what the comment was, but it was something along the lines of, hey, man, you're doing a great job. Y'all are the best. Y'all are handsome as hell. Y'all have everything going for you. You've got this all. Yeah, the one guy does look like a like a large purple hamburger monster, but just slightly less handsome, but still like. You've got it going on. And to that user, I just want to say, like, we really appreciate you. That said, never listen to our podcast again because we don't like kiss asses. Like, stop sucking up to us and, like, stop trying to, like, oh, like, move in on our circle. So, like, yeah, you, like get, off, get out of my face. Get yeah. off of our, our we thingies. Get off of our thingies. Bit of street cred here. But I do also want to sincerely say thank you so much. But oh my god! Yes. It, it literally means I was literally going to end this episode and then drive my car into like a lake and just see what happens because I was like, "This is kind of this seems like a good place to yeah. like hang out." Yeah, yeah. Well, because you had also you texted me like, "Is this a good lake?" And I was like, "For what?" And you're like, "Car car skipping." Yeah, and I I was like, "I don't know if that's a thing." Um. And you're like, well, but would it be good for that if it were a thing? I'm like, I guess. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much for that feedback. Here's a brand new one, and it's a very valid question. This is also from TikTok. It's a comment on on a response to, could we see you wrestle with Doc? This is at Spellcaster985. They said, quote, can you guys get two Porsche design hookahs and smoke them on the podcast. End quote. So thank you so much for this feedback. Um, this We have like a pretty hard rule about not smoking anything on the podcast. Um, only because our, our studio... Our studio has so many bees within it just in general that technically they own the property that we're on. Yeah. And we're sort of outvoted by... Uh, I, don't know if I mean, heard. by hundreds of thousands, honestly. Yeah. But the bees are like, I don't, not endangered, but like people are litigious. worried about them. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Sorry, litigious is the word I was looking for. Uh, so you can imagine how for us, we're renting. Can I just say that? We're renting. We don't own. Okay. Yeah. We, we did own it until we sort of lost the property to the bees just by sheer numbers. And then now we are renting it from them. And yeah, one of the conditions in our lease, no smoke. Obviously, that's how you like get rid of bees is you you know smoke out a hive. Well, and don't say that too loud because they really don't like it when we talk about that. Right. I guess we're not supposed to be like spilling that secret. I didn't know it was a secret, but whatever. 
Um, but then that, and we're also like supposed to. All honey companies are bad. They're stupid. They're dumb. Um, don't get your get your honeys from us. I guess. Yeah. Um, These bees are trying to start a company. Yeah. And they they keep saying it's all organic, and I kind of don't believe them on that. No, there's a lot of tech involved. The stuff they brought, the equipment they brought in, it's hard for me to believe this is truly organic, but whatever. They, uh, but yeah, so no smoking on the podcast. I'll say, because they tell us no smoking, but like the plumes coming, so much smoke from their, what they call a hive, that I'm yeah. almost just unsure. <sighs> well, I think they I have a funnel system. So like when they're getting lit, like when they're like lighting up a couple spliffs, mm-hmm. they know to go like, <gasps> pop, 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 and then like tilt their head up and go, yeah. They're really, and they their have, technique is better. I'll, I, yeah. I can admit that. They've got yeah. like a paper towel tube or something that they're blowing in that's yeah. shooting it out of the house or, yeah. you know, the studio. Hive, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, their house, I guess, which is yeah. what is the studio. Yeah. So I uh, hope that answers your question. Thank you so much for that feedback. That's really helpful for us to improve the podcast. Um, now for today's medical topic, autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease. Autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease was previously called infantile polycystic kidney disease. Um, Just so you're aware, uh, it's characterized by cysts predominantly in the renal collecting ducts, along with hepatic fibrosis. That's fibrosis in the liver, okay? Uh, So autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease is less common compared to the dominant variety, which we've already talked about, but the true incidence is unknown because many newborns will die without the proper diagnosis. So it sets in with newborns. And, and, and this is an important subject to talk about, and I am glad that you're you're getting into it, Doctor London. Um, I do. I think I just have a problem in general with the just commercialization of everything. Just the fact that AutoZone has sponsored this disease, right? The AutoZone, yeah. Like, do we have to see ads everywhere? Like everywhere I look, I have to see ads. Well, I mean, is it so? Because they have coupons, right? With the ads, a lot of times they have coupons. I get, but what, how does that relate to the disease though? Like, well, I don't, cause like sometimes as I'm learning about a disease, I also like my car does need maintenance. Um, yeah, no, that's just the advertisement working. There's no coupon in that. Uh, someone having this disease doesn't seem to give anyone coupons uh, or give anyone a discount. It's just reminding you to get stuff for your car. Yeah. Well, but then if I sign up for their subscription service, then they send me emails and sometimes there's a coupon in it. Okay, sure. Yes, I can agree that in the promotional emails they send you, there are coupons. Right. But not in the disease. When you see your patient with this disease, you haven't yeah. received like 10% off. Well, so usually I have because I've already signed up for their emails. Okay. Yeah, no, I understand. You can continue on. Okay. So, as I said, liver involvement is always present. And because of that, patients may have hepatic complications such as portal hypertension and cholangitis. So, especially the portal hypertension, that means uh, the blood f- that flows to the liver and back into the heart and then the lungs, all of that gets backed up because of these fibrosis of the liver. So, it can cause the, um, the lungs and everything to kind of be overloaded with uh, this the fluid fr- from the blood built up. So, uh, kidneys are increased in size, and this may cause severe abdominal distension. So your the belly essentially gets all big. Um, they can have high blood pressure. The kidneys, and, you know, I mean, the fact that it's about to be Dunkin's high blood pressure. Why would why would Dunkin' Donuts want to even associate their brand with that? That's what I don't understand. Well, I, I mean, I don't know because it seems like it seems like a product that probably has some sort of connection at, at, on some level with high blood pressure. Yeah, I, I mean, have you tried talking to the marketing team? Because like the marketing teams are, you know, they'll be pretty picky about this stuff. No, and I know, and they te- I know they like focus group it and stuff. Like it's tested, and people seem to respond to it. And I, I get it. Like you go to the doctor, the doctor is like, "You, your, your blood pressure, your Duncan's blood pressure is so high," and right there you've planted a seed. They're like, "Well, I'm gonna go to Duncan's after this." Yeah, but man, I don't know. It's just something seems crass about it. That's all. I, like I guess, but like, you know me, I'm like an anti corporate, yeah. like, hippie type. I guess like, if the ah, world, I don't know what I'm talking didn't about. Didn't run on Duncan. I would maybe get your meaning, but I'm trying to just think of how the world yeah. would run without it. And that, I, 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 don't, I don't know. 
I don't. I, have, I yeah. don't even have any answer. Um, so the kidneys in autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease can be so large that a newborn's uh, can lead to poorly formed lungs. So that plus I said the, the blood gets backed up and can go into the lungs. Um, so all these complications are the leading cause of morbidity and mortality in the neonatal period. So neonates means just newborn. Um, so newborns with severe autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease they present with Potter syndrome which is the constellation of clinical features associated with decreased amniotic fluid. That's also known as oligohydramnios. Um, Potter syndrome is characterized by hypoplasia of the lungs. That's just smaller lungs. Uh, their limb abnormalities, such as club feet, which is like their heels will be kind of shaped like a club. I, I, I hate to t inform you this. They actually just changed the other day, but that is Jimmy John's club feet now. Okay. So I, please so, know, so, go ahead and say that accordingly. Yeah, which is... Diff, like it basically it just causes difficulty in walking basically like it's just mm -hmm. kind of and i yeah jimmy john's club feet yeah right um and they can also have characteristic abnormal faces because basically they are they're newborns who in the amniotic sac they're like faces are pressed against the wall of it and so and they don't have enough fluid in there to support them so they everything gets squished and deformed more or less uh so ultrasound will show characteristic renal cysts in the absence of renal cysts in either parent. Oh boy, that's uh, that's actually twisters in theater just now. Renal cysts. Okay, I from from ultra. Okay, uh, so ultrasound will also show hepatomegaly and dilated bile ducts. Um, molecular genetic testing may confirm the disease in cases where the diagnosis is unclear. Once again, because this is autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, uh, there's no curative th therapy available, but you can manage the respiratory issues in newborns and then treat uh, end-state uh, renal disease with renal replacement therapy. So kidney transplants is, is a way to treat this. Uh, it's unfortunately a d difficult disease, autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease. And who's that sponsored by? Uh, the, just the, just kidney disease just on its own i i think that's a pretty big sponsorship i don't know if anyone's jumped on it yet i heard it's crypto.com that's trying to get in on that you know these bitcoin companies yeah but i mean you've seen what they've been doing with politics they've been like they also say that the next president's gonna buy every tiktok or bitcoin or whatever and yeah. you're like it, are they yeah and, so, and then they're like, they're like, yeah. And in the future, if you listen to this and they did do that, then yeah, that we actually meant like, oh yeah, or, or that. yeah. Interpret that as like obviously, yeah. And if um, if not, and of course, if that never happens, then interpret that as like, well, no, obviously. All right, uh, Cameron, you said that we have a guest today. Is that right? That's right, Dr. London. We have a very, very exciting guest. Okay. Well, hello there. My name is Dr. LondonSmith.com, and this is our producer, Cameron. Uh, what was your name? Hey, babies. How you doing? My name is Skunky Maltodextrous. Hi. Wow. Hey, uh, I guess first question. I'm uh, doing well, I feel like. Cameron, how about yourself? Um, been better. Specifically, I was better on Thursday. Really? 17 years ago. I remember you that day, and like, is that when you were born? Yeah, that was. Mm, when he was born. He's Gen yeah, Alpha. that was the day I was born. Yeah, I'm Gen Alpha, or, or maybe even whatever comes after that, because I'm so young. Hey, that, that is that's a beautiful thing. How old are you, skunky mouth, skunky mouthodextrous? Mouthodextrous. Technically, that's just the shortened form of my name, which is actually Skunky Sanchez Maltodextrous, or if you want, Skunky Sanchez Coming Bird Hyphen Terrible Maltodextrous. Oh, wow. Uh, do I have to say all that? Can I just say the short version? Can I just You can say whatever you want, baby. Live live. You know what I'm saying? It's all about living live, living in the funk zone, and slapping the bass. So can I call you, like, Skunkarino? Hey, that sounds good to me. I like that. Yes. <laughs> Finally, a guess that lets me, like, actually name them. They get so defensive. Now, Skunky, I'm going to go ahead and guess real quick what your profession is. Are you, a, are you an artist? That's it. I am an artist, baby. Uh, I am a slap bass aficionado. Also, I sometimes drive Lyft. Oh, wow. 
do you ever combine the two? Like, do you ever, a writer behaves good and you, you're like, hey, I'm going to give you a show. Either way, I, I bring the slap bass and I have it plugged into the car, do an amp in the car, and I'm always slapping as I'm driving, you know what I mean? Uh, they always scream. They always scream because they like it so much. They're always like, ah, please, sir! My life! You know what I mean? <laughs> That's so much better than the radio. Like, oh, do you want to listen to someone who's actually good at bass and someone who can actually groove right now? Or do you want to listen to, you know, Sabrina Carpenter on the radio? Yeah. I mean, hey, I'll be honest, though. Espresso, that shit slaps. Oh, yeah. Do you ever turn on the radio and just play along to the songs? All the time, baby. That's all I do. I wish you were my Lyft driver. My last Lyft driver became my coworker. It was Dr. Oh, Longo. wow. Yep. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. But, uh, well, I found out I could drive people just straight to the hospital. And, uh, you know, like, they, what were they going to do? Report me? Lyft doesn't care. Skunk Arena, are you, like, in a band? Or is this, like, a solo endeavor? Uh, at the moment, I'm not currently in any bands. I have been in bands quite a bit. Uh, you know, I always nail the audition. They're like, that's pretty cool, man. You can do all that slapping stuff. That's awesome. But then when we start to get there and I write cool songs and I write cool riffs and grooves and such, they're always like, oh, that's cool, but uh, we don't really want any slap bass on this song. And then I oh. get real pissed off. Skunky's a pretty happy guy most of the time, but you tell me you don't need slap bass? And I ain't in a good mood no more. <laughs> you know what I mean, baby? Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, I, I would be afraid that you'd start slapping something or someone else. Hey, whoa. You know? <laughs> Skunky is not a violent guy. <laughs> but he can be if he has to be. Uh... Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and we, we are on board with this, Skunky. I hope you understand. There's no issues here. Happy to have you on. Um. You know, just going to get out in front. I probably shouldn't even just be mentioning this. I should probably should just skip over it. But our theme song does not need slap bass. I just, I, I, I it felt like that was maybe the direction it was going to go in. Um, but I want to, I figured if I could get that out in front of that. I'm sorry. You, you, what, sorry, what the f*** did you just say? You're talking to me or Cameron. I didn't, I didn't say no, anything. The, yeah, London wasn't saying anything. F*** you boys. What the f***? You just say? I, I I said play that bass, boy. That's what I thought I heard. Okay, yeah, DJ Dylan, you need to incorporate some real slap bass sound into our theme song, please. So, uh, what's that? Is there is there a way that slap bass is different from the other kind of basses? I've only like I'm familiar with baseball and. I've seen a bass, like the ceiling, the singing kind on the wall with the plaque. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, I get it. You like to joke around. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> you like to, <laughs> oh, they, you like to you. rib and yeah. stuff. That's cool, man. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like That's the, cool. Like, I like the baby back. Like that. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're a funny doctor. You are. Thank you, Cassie. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. London, I don't think he's actually like on board with it. I think he's kind of starting to get mad. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, Skunky don't get mad. Skunky just like slapping the bass. Right, and you can't. You keep on. Is there a reason why you chose an instrument that you could slap? <laughs> yeah, baby. Because here's the thing. When I was a youngster, uh, I used to play just regular old boring bass, kind of like this. And it's like, that's stupid. That's dumb. Nobody wants that. And then one day, uh, our drummer just wasn't working. He, he just stopped, uh, he stopped functioning his whole brain. Uh, so I was like, hey, let me try to do both. Let me try to both play drums and bass. So I was like, how can you percussively play bass? And I said, what if you uh, slap it with your thumb and you uh, pop it with your finger? Right, right. I'm sorry, what how did the drummer? Yeah, the drummer. How did the drummer take the fact that like you just stole his job, basically, and that his brain wouldn't well, function? Well, his brain wasn't functioning yet, so it didn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> poor guy. What, I, did, yeah, 
how did it stop functioning? I think this is maybe where we're trying to we're trying to figure out the details. Oh yeah, of. it was dehydration. You know, I always told him, I was like, you should drink water, brother. And he decided to just drink whiskey. Oh wow. It was it, you know was there a slap involved, I'm just saying, in this brain frying? What the f you getting at, brother? Oh God! Okay, I just, uh, just I, you're, um, well, you're so proficient at it. That I just what what <laughs> you're so great at it. Yeah, I was just surprised that even the drummer needed uh, help or anything like that. Um, <laughs> do you uh, do we, what brings you here? Yeah, brings me uh, brings me to here the Jock Talk in... podcast. Oh yeah, y'all asked me to be here. Thank you. Oh yeah, but you know, uh, thank you for did, saying did that. You, what, did you have? I don't know. Like you've got this audience that can listen to you. Do you have a message? Do you have something you want to like push? I actually got a medical condition. I was hoping to get some uh, some input on. If y'all don't mind. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, we love giving medical advice. Uh, okay. I got a huge uh, hernia in a weird spot. We I guess. Yeah. I guess which spot is since you're leading us into so uh you know how a lot of hernias are inguinal or whatever such yeah and they're on the side of the they're testicles on... that's a, like a common that, that's spot one of them yeah, yeah 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 you have yeah mine's uh through my penis so oftentimes uh certain organs uh of which i am not sure pop through my penis Giving people the impression that my penis is much larger than it actually is. You know what I'm saying, baby? <laughs> yeah. And so for, for... It is not that big. <laughs> well, and, and, and for our listeners, he has also been playing the bass. Occasionally, the slaps have been coming from your sort of engorged penis. Yeah, which I, I would say from a medical perspective, I would say maybe that is doing damage. Yeah. The constant thumping of the mm. that area, the sensitive area. Right, okay. Might be. I mean, Dr. London, how do you, do you think I'm on the right track? Well, just to, just to clarify for our listeners, so a hernia is like an outpouching of, you know, the, the intestinal tract or whatever else, you know, from, from your abdominal region pushing out through, and it does as he said, go through the inguinal region, and it can go further down, going all the way through the the the, the, male, the, the penis is impressive. I don't think I've seen that done before until now, um, and especially the doctor was in complete wonderment. He was like, "Damn, baby, where that coming out your yeah. like that? That's crazy!" It's just like usually, and then I just grabbed my bass and started slapping, and he was also impressed. Yeah, usually there just aren't these weaknesses in the 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 connective tissue that allow that but wow you're i mean having seen you play it with that like when i say with that condition i mean using utilizing that okay okay yeah up oh, there we go yeah there it is no and it's i mean it's hot like i'm not gonna say it's not like I mean, like yeah if i saw I this mean, on if i saw this on hot or not the website we all yeah, frequent i would be I would be voting for hot, and it it just, but it you know, it reminds me a, a little of um, sort of my own situation down there, which is also um, kind of medically screwed up in a lot of other different ways, and then that makes me feel bad. Oh yeah, you like one of them cars? I'm one of those cars. You like one of them cars? You know those micro minis? Oh no! It's I wish that's how. Oh, oh my god! That's a short because at least there's yeah. At least there's documentation. Like there's someone to talk to about that. Mine. Are you familiar with a tesseract? It's sort of a four D cube. This is when if you expand your three D space to a four D space, but all the angles are an even degree. My I think my d stuck in one of those. Mm. You got a test to correct. Yeah, uh, yeah well, it's stuck that's in really. One. Yeah, it's. But I think overall, the overall image is that it combines to be a test around. Just with the amount of time your skin has had to fuse, yeah. Yeah, and sort of engulf. Is it like normally the straightest point from 
testicle A to testicle B would be a straight line, but in this case, they're kind of just meeting in the middle, so you're essentially just uh, become, you're just at the, the other end, suddenly, through a black hole or something. It is, yeah, it's sort of the way, because we live in the 3D space, we can't actually see the full 4D space. And so it does, from our vantage point, looks like my dick disappears into thin air and then appears in just a completely different spot, sometimes like miles or yards away. Yeah. And we, we go into a lot of atomic theory on this podcast, and I think this would be one example. Like, you can't predict the location of an electron at a given moment. Similarly... Yeah. Cameron's There's, it's impossible to know where my the other end of this tesseract is and so thus this where my dick is being act. sort of yeah. wor- you know wormhole to Well, I mean, I would say for advice, if you want some advice on your hernia, um I would say show it off more um, try to sell it. If try to monetize it in some way, that'd be. Hey, not a not a bad idea. Just playing that slap bass in front of the people with my <laughs> out in my intestine, shoving through my. Hole yeah, like and that on is, the inside. That is the other note: is that possibly if part of your uh, probably small intestine is in there, then there's a chance that it'll be experiencing some necrosis, which could lead to some uh, serious bacterial infections going forward. So there's a chance that you might Ooh. also want to have it like treated laparoscopically with surgery at some point. Okay, as well. I so apologize. Would- this is Doctor London is in the pocket of big pharma, and so he's mm. always like, "Oh, go get more surgeries, go to more doctors." Whereas yeah. I am more like, "Dude, just like monetize it, baby, make it content." I- I feel you. I feel you, brother. But I just do want to respond to that for a second. Are you telling me, doctor, that um, I'm funky from the inside out? Oh, baby. Well, do you have an answer? Yeah, he well, doesn't even have an answer. You know it. I'm funky from the inside out. There ain't no, there ain't no other answer but that. Well, it does feel like a bit of a put down on. You know, so I get. I, necrosis sounds like a funky. It's a necrosis sounds like you're funky. It starts to stink, right? When people die, they stink. Yeah, no, I, I have noticed that about them. I, and I'm sure the drummer also experienced something similar. Uh, well, I guess you know it's been so good to have you on. But, uh, well, and I want to say so, Skunky, if you heard at the beginning of this episode, we are about to launch Jock Talk University. It's a huge campus that covers all over town. And we, I mean, I'm kind of wondering if you'd like to be a professor at our university. You can teach, teach like, I don't know, like slapping. bass, uh, like bass slapping. I would love that. I would or love bass to history. Teach. I would lead the teacher. I would love to teach the history of slap bass. Uh, I'll start from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'll move forward into like sort of the '90s. You know. So for you, the the timeline is just based on finger placement on the bass. Not exactly. It's actually uh, that's actually valid information right there. That second one was Red Hot Chili Peppers. Flea kind of took what uh, the other band Sly and the Family Stone had started. Um, and I was also going to get into the Victor Wooten double slap technique, but we don't have to do that. Well, you can get to it in class. Yeah, it's just that the like a great thing for our elderly students. Yeah. Wow. They're gonna their grills on their dentures are gonna be gleaming with glee. Oh yeah, brother. You know it. Um, but. Thank you so much, Skunky. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Any comedians you're a fan of? Yeah, uh, I'm a I'm a comedian of this fan, Victor Olivas. He's on uh, some of my favorite sketch teams, uh, Pop Witch. And they are competing at the UCB Annex this Wednesday at, I believe, 7 o'clock in the UCB Cage match. Uh, go vote for them. You might see a familiar face. <laughs> also, they have a show on uh, August 11th. Okay, so the day after this podcast comes out. Good. So everyone yeah. go to that, um, and it'll I'm sure it'll be great. And probably they'll have more stuff scheduled, so you can look them up uh, at that time as well. And it's Pop Sandwich, you said? It's called Pop Witch. Pop Witch, Pop Witch. So go look them up, and that's Victor Olivas. Am I saying that right? Am I saying that wrong? Olivas. Olivas. Okay. 
Uh, so yeah. Go look him up and uh, also obviously look up Skunky at your local university this fall. Uh, and your local university is Jock Doc University, by the way. Um, so thank you so much to Skunky. Thank you to our producer, Cameron. Thank you to Digital in the House. 